Hello everybody, this is Black Dragon Squad here coming to you for another deck profile. Here is Dale, and today he's going to be showing us his uh, up-to-dated um, Cyber Dragon deck. Alright, so I've been building this deck since about April, kind of. So I guess I'll just get started here. So, three Cyber Dragons is, you know, you don't play Cyber Dragon without three of those. Uh, he's just a staple of the deck. Three cores. You always want to see core. He also has a pretty good effect out the graveyard. Saved my butt many a times. Naxter is basically a cyber rub system on legs. He's pretty good. Revives a cyber dragon when summoned, you know, normal or special summon. You can kind of, you can special summon him by discarding a card. And then you can basically discard a cyber dragon and special summon him and then immediately pull the cyber dragon out so good opener uh cyber dragon hers i play three of them and his main his two effects are when he's sent to the graveyard by any means you know discard him for one for one etc he uh he searches out cyber dragon so he's a good you know get cyber dragon in your hand you can if you open up and you're like oh great i don't have anything great Summon them, tribute them off for something like a Link Karibo. You get your Cyber Dragon, move from there. Uh, and when he's special summoned, he becomes level 5, so it's an extra way to make an, a uh, Nova. Dry, just extra body on the field. Veer, same idea. Uh, Eltonin comes in clutch a lot. Well, not a lot, not as much as it used to, but he's good. Wipes the field, non-targeting, non-destruction board white, so that's kind of hard to come by. I play two Galaxy Soldiers. He's kind of just gateway to Nova, and by proxy, Infinity. Uh, the biggest one that I'm debating is two of the uh, Star Destroying Kaiju, free removal, and with the right cards, you don't even have to worry about leaving them on your opponent's end of the field. And that is the... Uh, that's the monsters for the deck. And then I run for hand traps, I run three effect failures. This is kind of the more debatable end, but three of those, they always seem to be useful. Three ash. Ash is useful against most things. Can't really think of anything better to throw in there. So that's your uh, hand traps there. So if once now we're going to get into spells, three emergency. You kind of want three. Repair plant, repair plant can be better in some instances, but emergency bricks less. Uh, I have three twin twisters. It's fun to blow up your opponent's back row and save your butt sometimes. Two machine dupes can get kind of broken. Most of the cyber dragon monsters are known as cyber dragon on the field, so you play something like a Naxter, play a machine dupe, bring two more cyber dragons, the level five cyber dragon out. That's a free Nova, and possibly a free Infinity. I play two Overload Fusion, to just so that you see it more often. It banishes cards out of the graveyard, so in really long matches that can be pretty good. The only downside is it has to be a dark monster, so you're limited to the uh, Chimera Tech line. One Cyberload, you can get a pretty good combo off the Overload. It, go, it shuffles back into the deck off the field and out of the ban face up banished cards. So if you pull a link, you know, you put a bunch of guys on the field, you make a link, you play an overload, put the guys you sent to the graveyard for the link into the banished zone, throw a cyber load down, you have two big beat sticks that are, uh, are rather a pain to get rid of. I play one rev system. It's always nice to have. Uh, it's like a more versatile monster reborn. Uh, you can use it to kind of do a Naxter and put a uh, Cyber Dragon out of your hand on the field or use it as a Monster Reborn for most of the Cyber Dragon monsters. Unfortunately, doesn't work for Infinity, but if you have a Naxter in the graveyard, it doesn't matter because you can summon Naxter and then that'll pull Infinity. Uh, one Cyber Repair Plant, you can search most things beyond the hand traps out of the deck. So it's always nice to have one of those. One for one. Should go without saying, it's free Naxter. If you use it on hers, it becomes level 5. So that's an extra summon to potentially get a Nova on the field. And then 
the one I'm debating the most. I play one upstart goblin, just try and boost some of the consistency. And just see the cards that you want more often. So that's the main deck. And as we go in the extra deck here. So I'll start off with the Lynx. I only play one of each of these for the Lynx. One Link Rebo just takes one level one. You really only need one. He has an effect out the graveyard. You contribute him, or you contribute a level one and special summon him out of the graveyard. So I don't see much sense in playing two. Platinum Gadget is a free summon when you can pull it off and get some good plays going. If you're playing a machine deck, you want Cleefort Genius. Uh, he just comes in clutch a lot. And Cyber Dragon Seeker. Haven't gotten around to the Prismatic Rare that came out. Uh, the Megatons just came out today, so, and I don't feel like spending the money on it. And this guy's been good for me so far. So that's all my links, and it's one ups of each of those. And then we're gonna go into the uh, XZ monsters. I played two Novas, just in case something happens to the first one. It's nice to be able to have two, and some turns you can physically put two on the field with the right hand, so, always good to have. Two Infinities. As I said, just in case something happens to the first one, it gives you extra options. Infinity is really the selling point for me on this deck. Some people might argue otherwise, but Infinity is what you want to see as fast as possible. Chimer two Chimeratech Rampage Dragons. He's good. He's basically your target for Overload Fusion. He can uh, pop back row up to the amount of monsters used for him, meaning he can pop up to three Spell or Traps. And on top of that, level 5, so you can use it to make a Nova. Jay. One Eternity Dragon. It's kind of debatable, Jay, but I like keeping Jay. him around. It's kind of fun, but... He's not down there. He's, He's coming clutch once problem. in a while. I hope he didn't sleep down there. He might die from cold. <laughs> 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 Alright. So I play two Chimeratech Fortress Dragons. He can contact views off of either side of the field, so I use him to get rid of the uh, kaiju along with a cyber dragon. Good, just board removal. Just, just by and then, uh, <laughs> and then for the last two, two mega fleet dragons. I might cut the kaiju and the Chimeratech fortress dragon down to one and play three fortress or not fortress mega fleets, just because he basically can contact views extra monsters in the extra monster zone away as long as you have a cyber dragon to fuse with it which is great against people who are short-sighted and leave their good guy in the extra monster zone you can kind of throw a pretty good wrench really solid card highly recommend and then beyond that that's the extra deck and then going into the side deck it's kind of half cards i've been playing around with and experimenting and some other cards that I know I'm probably might want at some point. So we're gonna let me find the right order here for these. Go through these a whole lot. All right. So just because I happen to have them, I have three Joel and Lockbirds in case I ever decide I really want them. I haven't really acquired too many of the hand traps, so just more stuff at your disposal is always good. Uh, three red reboots. Not sure if I really want them or not, but I have them, so they're there. And I know they can be good against certain matchups. Cybernetic Overflow is a beast of a card. You banish Cyber Dragons with different levels out of your hand, field, and or graveyard. And up to the amount that you banish, you can basically just destroy cards on your opponent's field. So it's really good for uh, just getting rid of nuisance cards. You kind of blow yourself up to blow your opponent up harder. The only drawback is most of the Cyber Dragon monsters aren't known as Cyber Dragon in the hand, but the longer the game goes on, the more useful it becomes, because once they hit the field or go into the graveyard, 99% of the time they're known as Cyber Dragon at that point, and you know you can get possibly up to like three or four card pops on one card. So always nice, and you can also use it to set up your Cyber Load Fusion. So always good. And then this is more getting into the experimental stuff. I just have one Mirror Force in case I decide I want it. I haven't gotten around to getting a Raigeki yet, so it's Mirror Force. Um, I ran Monster Reborn for a while, and I figure if I ever decide I want two uh, Revival cards, 
I have it in there. Sometimes it might come in clutch. I screw around with limiter removal most of the time. That's probably going to be one of the first cards I pull out of this side deck when I find something better. But it has its uses once in a while, so I keep it around in case I decide I want it. Um, I have two Cyberlord Fusions, so I keep the second one there in case I decide, hey, maybe I want to run two, but given you can search it with core, I only run one for the most part. That and this one's got a little bit of a bend in it, so I run the other one primarily. And Lightning Vortex, because I don't own Regeki. And you can kind of combo it off with hers, so you can use hers, Cyber Dragon hers as the discard cost, and you can blow up your opponent's board, and also get a Cyber Dragon in your so it has its applications. I just would rather run a Aragaki if I had access to it. All right, and that's been that. I and Dale here owns his own YouTube channel called uh, Card Games Not on Motorcycles. I'll put the link in the description below. Dale, thank you for showing us your Cyber Dragon deck. This has been Black Dragon Squad, and until next time.